What's up, guys? This is Girl Venix, and welcome back to another video. For today's video, we're diving into episode 7 of Draw Like an Architect, and we're learning all about axonometric drawings. An axonometric, or axon for short, is a 3D representation of an object or a view. It's drawn in a way to let you see three sides at the same time, which makes it super helpful when a basic floor plan just doesn't cut it. Honestly, axons are my favorite ways to create diagrams. They provide a lot of information to the viewer, especially when it comes to understanding scale or massing. You'll definitely find yourself doing a lot of axons in school, especially when presenting it in front of your class. And even in real world practice, axons still show up, particularly in the conceptual phases of a project. They're great for client presentations, especially when you wanna add a bit of color and layers of information. Now, when it comes to construction documents, Axons aren't usually graphically detailed as what you see here. They kind of look like this most of the time, but they can still be super helpful if you want to show a ceiling grid or a special detail, and it's usually super basic looking. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw axons by hand along with some tips I picked up in school. This is something you'll want to get comfortable with, especially if you're planning to be an architect someday. So let's get started. Let's start by going through the three types of axons. An isometric is when the three principal axes, X, Y, Z, make equal angles. It gives a clean, uniform look, but it can feel a bit distorted, kind of like something out of a video game or animation, though it's great for clarity and symmetry. A diametric projection is an axonometric projection in which two of the principal axes are equally foreshortened, and the third appears longer or shorter than the other two. It might be confusing at first, but don't worry, I'll walk you through a few practice examples. In a trimetric drawing, all three axes are at different angles and foreshortened differently. This gives the most realistic result, but is also the most complex to draw. A resource tip. If you're new to architectural drawing, I highly recommend the Francis Ching books. They're like the holy grail for drafting. So, I used them in my first year of architecture school. You can probably find a free PDF version online. Materials. You'll need a ruler. I'm using an architectural scale, especially for practice too. Paper of your choice. I'm using trace paper, a 30, 60 degree triangle, and a 45 degree triangle. Drawing pencils. I'm using B pencils because they're softer and give a bolder line weight. An eraser. And of course, your T-square or drafting board. Make sure that your desk has a straight 90 degree edge if you're using a T-square. Step one, make sure your workspace is clean. Leftover graphite and debris can smudge your drawing. Uh-oh. Step two, before you start drawing, test your pencils. H pencils are hard graphite. The higher the number, the lighter and harder the line. It's great for guidelines and fine line details. B pencils are soft graphite. The higher the number, like a 4B, 6B, the darker and softer the lines. It's perfect for bold outlines and shading. You can clearly see here the difference when you test them on paper. Step three, set your plane and axon type. First, set your plane. A good tip is that if you want a good way to have a consistent line weight is to rotate your pencil as you're drawing your line. So as you can see here, there's text on the pencil and you'll see the pencil rotating along the way. It's really just something you have to get used to. So let's start again until the line is of your liking. You can always practice on a sketchbook beforehand too to get the feel of your pencils or your pen. Let's practice with basic forms. Here I'm doing an isometric using my 45 degree triangle and I've created a point as my center line and I'm going to proceed to draw my angles. We'll be doing a 2 inch cube so I measured 2 inches on both sides and I striked my line through. Again, measure two inches on your vertical lines. And I almost forgot to add my center line, so add that in. Then you repeat the same process. Since this is the top of the cube, you're gonna flip your 45 degree triangle to enclose the cube. 
step four. If your drawing is to your liking, you can go ahead and use a B pencil to thicken the outer edges of the cube. I use a 6B for my edges. Next, use another line weight for the inner part of your drawing. I'm using a 2B for this, and I recommend to go lighter than the 6B. Next, you can go ahead and erase the excess lines, or you can keep them if you're instructed to show them at the bottom. Just like what I'm doing here. And there you go, there's your first isometric drawing. Before you go ahead to practice too, let's first take a hand wash break, but of course, let's learn a tip. If your eraser looks like this, there's no need to do this to make it clean. A simple and quick solution is to take one of your blades and cut off the edges. And there you go. You don't need to get that graphite leftover on your drawings or on your hands. Now let's do another practice drawing a cube. But let's do a 30, 60 degree angle, a diametric projection. Set one side at 30 degrees and the other side at 60 degrees. Then add your vertical lines, your center line, and we'll be using two inches as well. So remember to add your tick marks and strike your lines through. I like to extend mine just as a guideline or maybe I want to add something. Maybe the drawing is longer or taller than you expected. So that's why I extend it and then proceed to do the bottom of the cube. We'll repeat the process as the first to seal your drawings with the line weights of your choice to create dimensions for your drawing. And here's a close comparison between the two drawings. Practice two. Now let's take the same methods, but this time let's test it on a floor plan. Remember this plan from episode three? If you haven't seen the video yet, I highly recommend you check it out. To get the angle that I want for my axon, I like to first mark it up on paper before taping my floor plan to my work surface. Next, take your floor plan and match it up to the angle. And then, tape it up. Next, take your paper and overlay it to create your drawing. Outline the lines of your drawing. I recommend to get all walls that flow with the angles. For example, if you start with 30 degrees, draw all the walls that flow with that angle before you do 60 degrees. Next, you do your vertical lines. And this is a fun part because you raise your walls, doors, and windows to create a three-dimensional look of the space. In this drawing, I'm using a 1 8 inch equals 1 foot scale, and I'm setting my walls at 12 feet. A bit high, but I love high ceiling, so don't come at me, please. <laughs> After that work, I took a break. I have some Flaming Hot Doritos, and I use chopsticks because I don't want spicy dust on my drawings. The next step is concealing the top. We're not adding a roof because I wanted to show you guys how the drawing shows the interior space. This does give a 3D understanding of scale, form, and the layout. You can also show the roof with the building itself, but it just depends on like what context you're trying to show. So maybe if you want to show the inside of the space, I recommend doing an exploded axon, but it just really depends what you want to present. You should start seeing the space come together. The height of the windows, connection from the living room to outdoor space, etc. I'm not finished yet, but I wanted to stop here to show you what it looks like without the floor plan at the bottom. You'll see how this approach brings a flat floor plan to life. 
So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope that it helps you get a solid understanding of exonometric drawings and how to get started them yourself. Remember, you don't need to be a super skilled artist to draw axons. It's really just about learning the technique and mastering your line weights. Keep your drawings clean, take breaks when you need to, and practice regularly in your sketchbook. It really does make a big difference. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a like, subscribe, and comment down below with any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see. And don't forget to share this with a friend, a family member, someone who needs these tips. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!